Turkey has hosted the President of Israel only a few days ago. Now this raises a lot of questions. Namely, is this the same man that's been giving it all that to Israel? Has Erdogan chosen Israel over Palestine? What on earth? is going on with our leaders. Is this the same country that gave us Erdurul? What would he think about all this? <laughs> Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Now Erdogan is seen as one of two figures. Either he's seen as the saviour and leader of the Ummah or he's seen as a leader like the Republican Party of the US is, which is a hybrid between Christianity and secularism. So in this regard Erdogan would be utilizing Islam just so he can appease the majority Muslim population. Now what I'm gonna say next is gonna be interpreted differently by people of either camp one or camp number two and that's up to you. <laughs> so a lot of us have fallen prey to the big talk of Erdogan. Israel is a terrorist state. We won't leave Jerusalem to the mercy of a child murdering country. Because of that we put him on a big pedestal and we have very high expectations of him. But the people who follow politics are less naive than I would say you and me because they will know that Turkey has been doing trade with Israel worth 6.7 billion dollars mate. That's billion with nine zeros. And this was even during the height of the big talk when we were seeing tweets and him giving very you know powerful lectures. We won't leave Jerusalem to the mercy of a state that has no value other than occupation and plunder. But behind the scenes all of this still continued. In 2014 Turkish Airlines led the world in the most flights going to and from Israel. No visas are required by Israelis when they visit Turkey but it's not the same the other way around. And this was something that I had to really look into because I was shocked. Apparently a couple of years ago or last year in Azerbaijan Turkey and Israel were working together against Armenia. But regardless they were working together mate. Now before we start going nuts and start posting Yo this guy is a piece of work mate he's a hypocrite. Allah knows best but let's give the other side of the coin. What could be the possible reasons why he's doing this? Number one competing markets. If Turkey is doing trade with only a few countries those few countries will raise the price because they know they don't have any competition. If Turkey is doing it with multiple countries then people will drop their price just so they can get the deal with Turkey. Number two Turkey is in NATO and NATO is a very private club so he has to give his pound of flesh every now and then so he can stay in this club. Number three Turkey has been sanctioned by the US because it had bought military equipment from Russia and also because I think this was during the Trump era he didn't return somebody that America was asking for and then Trump threatened him and then of course sanctions in it. So maybe doing a deal with Israel will you know help him with the sanctions. Next we've got domestic issues. People that are casting votes don't care about what's going on internationally. They care about the cost of things and you know how easy their daily life is. So we might feel the need to compromise certain things just so the people are happy and they're gonna vote him back in. And another reason is he's keeping it solely to do with energy and trade and he has not compromised Palestine. And this is evident from the articles that we've seen there's been no 
clear compromise of Palestine. So, in conclusion, people are gonna say, Yeah, but Turkey's gotta do that to survive, mate. It's playing a double game. Being in Europe, you gotta do these things, mate. But these are excuses that we're seeing, not just from Erdogan fans, but all over the world, yeah? You see these excuses given by Pakistanis. When Pakistan chooses to stay quiet when it comes to the Uyghur Muslims in China, because it doesn't want to harm the economic relationship with China. Then you've got the UAE who is very tight with India despite what it's doing in Kashmir because it doesn't want to harm its trade. And then you've got you and me. We'll make excuses to do with I can't pray at work because I'm going to lose work and I have to make this compromise. I'll just make up the salahs when I go home. Or dealing with interest. Now this is the way of the world mate. We've got to do this. We've got to survive. So you can see at a high level these excuses are being made and even at a low level. And the danger with this is there is an Akida issue here. Belief, yeah? Aqidah is belief. What do I mean? Well, there's this misconception that we create the wealth and we cut Allah out of it. Yeah, it's me, mate. I do these things. The knife doesn't cut if the permission of Allah is not there. The doctor can't heal if the permission of Allah is not there. The lawyer can't help you if the permission of Allah is not there. And we see many instances in the seer of the Prophet ﷺ. There was a treaty of Hudaybiyah where the Muslims were given very unfair conditions. However, this was still a victory for the Muslims. The Prophet ﷺ alongside the companions were also boycotted. Yeah, we talk about sanctions. The Prophet and the Muslims Muslims were sanctioned. However, now look, Islam is still the fastest growing religion in the world. May Allah give us the ability to act upon what has been said, internalize it and implement it from the low levels in our homes to the high levels in our countries. I'll see you guys next time inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.